Over to you. <coughs> okay, thank you very much. And the next speaker is Cindy Becker from TNO, and um, I'm really keen on her talk because when we are out on a hunt to find companies using real nanomaterials, um, we have difficulties, so that's why I use the word being on a hunt. And here we get an overview from the Dutch industrial sector, um, what is really on the market. Cindy, the floor is you. Well, thank you for your introduction, Marcus. Um, as the previous speaker already stated, um, emission and exposure of nanoparticles and nanomaterials is the first step leading to exposure of two uh, effects and risks of uh, nanomaterials. Therefore, uh, we held a, a TNO, we held a survey to get insight into the production and application of nano end products in Dutch industrial sectors and the potential for exposure. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, as we probably all know, nanomaterials are incorporated in a wide range of products. Consequently, workers handling these products are being exposed to nanomaterials. In order to make full use of the opportunities of nanomaterials and in the meantime managing their risks of working with nanomaterials, we need to get insight into the potential of exposure and the level of exposure. Therefore, the Dutch government aims at a dual approach by um, supporting scientific research to increase the knowledge about nanomaterials and their risks, and in the meantime, uh, supporting the precautionary principle through minimization and prevention of exposure at the workplace. Getting more insight into uh, the exposure scenarios and the relevant sectors, the applied risk management measures within these sectors and the number of workers exposed at the workplace is the first step in both approaches. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, here you see the life cycle of manufactured nanomaterials relevant for worker exposure. A Dutch study by Bohr et al. investigated the first two stages of this life cycle, which are the production of nanomaterials and the formulation of nano-intermediates. Our study, however, focused on the stages after that, that are the production and professional application of nano end products. In order to get an answer to our three objectives, we held a survey in three phases. In the first phase, we identified as many nano end products as possible by using literature and the internet. In the second phase, we uh, linked the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the identified products to uh, relevant sectors in the Dutch industry. And in the third phase, we held a tier telephone survey to get an idea about the actual use of nano products, of nano end products. Tier one was among um, sector organization. For each sector, we uh, contacted at least one sector organization, and the contacted person was interviewed using a structured questionnaire containing questions about possible exposure scenarios within that sector. Tier 2 was among randomly selected companies. For each sector, 20 randomly selected companies were contacted by telephone, and uh, the contacted person was uh, interviewed using a structured questionnaire containing questions about the exposure scenarios, the uh, risk management measures, and the number of workers exposed to, within that uh, company. We did a randomly selected uh, survey so that we can get an idea about the market penetration, and that is the percentage of uh, companies within one sector producing or applying nano end products. Uh, you might remember that term, the market penetration, since I will be using it later on. So then we get an answer uh, to our three objectives. In total, we contacted 460 companies, of which 37 indicated to either produce or apply nano end products. They are, uh, you can see them in the table uh, on the sheet. These are all the identified uh, sectors classified by produ production or application of nano end products. The uh, majority of the uh, identified products were coatings, and other include concrete, paper, um, uh, cosmetic, and uh, personal care. The companies were also asked about their, uh, the activities likely to cause exposure. During the production, we could identify two activities, which are the mechanical mixing of nanomaterials, and the manual application of nanomaterials. During the application, we found three additional activities, 
uh, I'm sorry, t during the production it was mechanical mixing with relatively low energy levels. And during the application we found also the mechanical mixing of nanomaterials with relatively high emission potentials um, of high energy levels. In addition, we found the man uh, spray application and manual mixing of nanomaterials. Uh, here in this table you can see uh, the applied risk management measures. 33 of the 37 companies state, uh, gave information about the applied risk management measures. They can be divided into nano-specific and non-nano-specific risk management measures. And the check marks, check marks in this table um, show that at least one company within the sector apply the corresponding risk management measure. Less than 24% of the companies stated that they use nano-specific risk management measures. However, the majority of the company uses uh, conventional risk management measures to reduce the uh, exposure to harmful substances in general. This is an overview of the number of workers potentially exposed to nanomaterials. Um, and this number was based on the market penetration. Oh, the market penetration, the average number of companies per sector, and the total number of, and the average number of workers uh, exposed per company. And summing over all the sectors results in a total of approximately 3,000 workers potentially exposed uh, to nanomaterials in the Dutch industry during the application or production of nano and products. Um, for prioritizing uh, the sectors for future studies and policy makers to focus on, we do not only need the number of workers exposed, but also the level of exposure. The level of exposure is uh, for a large uh, amount determined by the activity emission potential. And as you might remember, we identified five different activities, and they are mentioned below on this sheet. These activities can be subdivided into relatively low, moderate, or high um, emission activities. By combining the number of workers exposed per sector on the y-axis with the activity emission potential on the x-axis, indicates that future studies and policy makers should focus uh, first on uh, the car body repair or the automotive industry, painters and coaters, and the shoe repair shops. Uh, it should be noted that the frequency and duration of exposure was not taken into account for this uh, prioritization. Other, another discussion point are the end-of-life activities, uh, which were not taken into account for our study. However, there might be activities with relatively high emission potentials during these processes, and therefore the end-of-life activities uh, will become relevant in the future. There were several other studies focusing on the uh, exposure of uh, nanomaterials. They are mentioned here. Um, the, the, the identified sectors within these studies were for a large part uh, consistent with the sectors identified in our study, with exception of the electronics industry, which was not taken into account for our study due to its the first character. The number of potentially exposed workers was not always consistent with our study. However, uh, the, the, sim the similarities regarding the focus and the scope of the different studies um, give ways to assume that the uh, numbers do not necessarily contradict. And the Dutch study by Bormetal uh, reported that approximately 500 workers are exposed during the production of nanomaterials. Uh, due to the focus of this study, the, the numbers of BOM are, for a large part, complementary to our study. Um, as I already said, the majority of the companies indicated that they used non-nanospecific risk, risk management measures. And although the, some studies show that the conventional risk management, risk management measures uh, reduce exposure to nanomaterial, their effectiveness should be further investigated before companies can be advised on the safe use of nanomaterials. Um, other limitations, um, when looking at the results of our studies, some limitations and uncertainties have to be kept, kept in mind. Um, the, the identification of nano end products was based on the labeling of the product 
containing nanomaterials or a claim of the producer or retailer. However, some products uh, not labeled as nanomaterial nano products could contain nanomaterials and the other way around. Um, other sources of uncertainty were the small sample size and the variation in company size, affecting our results on the res number of workers exposed. So, based on our results, we can conclude that uh, nanofactured nanomaterials are applied in a wide range of industries and that coatings are the most identified uh, nano end product. At least a few thousand workers are potentially exposed in the Netherlands during the production and application of nano end products. And um, the um, manufactured nanomaterial exposure is not a specific issue of concern in most of the companies. Um, demonstrating a lack of awareness. For future studies, we can recommend that they should also focus on end-of-life activities, since they will become relevant in the future. And further, additional research is necessary to uh, identify activities that could, uh, could um, cause exposure in the electronics industry. The results will, uh, for our study, study will base as, serve as a basis for um, in-depth exposure and health surveys that are currently being planned in the Netherlands. And in addition, the results of our study can be used for future studies and policy makers to uh, promote the precautionary principle and in the meantime support companies um, for uh, safe use of nanomaterials. So I would like to thank you for your attention and I will be happy to answer any of your questions. Are there any questions for, for Cindy? Some very clear results there. I saw a hand go up uh, in the back there. Cindy, you showed a very interesting slide in which you plotted the number of people exposed uh, for a certain activity versus the yes. level of risk. Um, yeah. And I wonder whether it, you have applied or whether it's possible to apply a weighting factor between the risks that are related to aerosols, such as the sprays, which you had mm. at the very far right up mm -hmm. side, versus, for example, a material like concrete, which has mixed in uh, to it. Yes. yes, that is the next step that we have to do. We have to uh, look really deep into the exposure levels and that we can, uh, this was based, the, the, the classification was based on literature and uh, some kind of experience and then we can make the, such a table but um, we have to look really deep into it to make a, a precise classification, yes. Because I guess that would modify your x-axis in some, or weight your x-axis mm. for the different types of products. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Great. We've got time for one more question. Uh, mm. The choice is yours. Mm. Okay. Mm. Just uh, thank you for that. Just a quick question in relation to the electronics industry. Yes. You said you, you didn't include it. I suppose the reason is, the question is, why not? And are you planning mm. to do it in the future? Um, yes, the, the first question um, we didn't include it because it's the first year we contacted uh, uh, several sector organizations and several big companies uh, in the field of uh, electronics, but they couldn't um, give us more information about possible products or possible exposure scenarios. So we called at least um, 20 uh, companies asking for where are we, where are we looking for, but. They couldn't give us any answer, so that was just limit. And are we planning it? Yes, we are planning to do that. <laughs> okay, this is clearly a, um, a, a very hot, uh, hot topic and a hot piece of research. I wish we could have more time to have more questions. Yeah. Um, but I must say thank you ever so much, Cindy. Um, this, this will be followed up with some interest, I suspect, by several of the members of the audience. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.